Decades of widening inequality and political corruption have brought America to a breaking point. But just how far have we fallen? In some regards, America has more in common today with the developing world than industrialized nations. Many people are asking, is America becoming a third world country? Now, while that term may be antiquated, it's a question worth answering. When economist Peter Temin of MIT applied a model to measure how various societies are doing, the results were staggering. Temin found that America resembles a developing country in six ways. Number one, political power is concentrated in the hands of the wealthy and corporations. They use their influence to set the rules of the economy for their own gain, giving ordinary citizens almost no say. America resembles a banana republic. Number two, another way the United States resembles a developing country is the wealthy and corporations keep wages low by gutting protections for workers, busting up unions, and blocking increases in the minimum wage. The typical American worker now earns around $22.65 per hour, not much more than what the typical worker earned 50 years ago, adjusted for inflation. Number three, meanwhile, as in the developing world, those in power stoke racial, ethnic, and religious tensions in order to prevent a coalition of the working class and poor from rising up against them. Consider Donald Trump's attempts to scapegoat immigrants and play into the hands of white nationalists. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. And they're taking your jobs and you better be careful. Everything's coming across the border. It's like vomit. Number four, developing countries have few human rights protections. Here in America, mass incarceration strips millions of people of their rights, often for non-violent offenses. The United States imprisons more people than Russia or even China. Number five, it's often the case in the developing world that wealthy elites and corporations pay little or nothing in taxes and disregard regulations. For decades, America's wealthy and their enablers and government have lobbied for lower taxes and fewer regulations. America's rich are now paying a far lower share of their incomes in taxes than at any time since World War II. Number six and finally, developing nations have a low level of social mobility. Children born poor in America have less of a shot at economic success than children born poor in Canada, Denmark, or the United Kingdom. In order to reverse these trends, we have our work cut out for us. But we can't lose faith in America. Those of us who love this country must demand political and economic reforms to strengthen our democracy and create an economy that works for all. For starters, we must get big money out of politics and stop corporations from bending the rules of the economy in their own favor. We've got to also make the wealthy pay their fair share of taxes in order to ensure the gains of the economy are shared more widely and ordinary Americans can get ahead. We can and must make America work for all. What do you think? How can we save our democracy and economy? Let us know in the comments. If you found this video informative, please also watch our video on the real American story. As always, thank you for watching, and please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one.